Hi, and welcome to my World's 2022 preview series where we're going to cover the Istanbul Wildcats, uh, second to last team, and then we're going to go over roles. Um, down in the description, you'll see three links Twitter, Discord, and YouTube memberships. Twitter, follow me there so I can spread my social media wings. I say that every video. Um, Discord, there's probably like almost 300 people that have joined the Discord so far, usually 50 to 75 members active at a time. Um, we have a category for like activities, which are like pickums, uh, a player pool thing that I created, and uh, predictions for when Worlds goes on. So if you want to join and maybe do those, you can. I think we have roughly like 30 people that have participated in both so far. Um, and then YouTube memberships, three dollars supports me, keeps the channel alive. Obviously, you got to pay the bills, and this channel at this point would not pay the bills. So. That is what it is. And then at uh, $10 supports me even more and you get extra content. Um, I do my uh, LOL Esports Roundup, go over all the games that are from one day and preview what's going on in the next day. And after that video is done, I do my predictions in a video and that becomes a members only video where I go over how I think the games are going to turn out. Um, excuse me, pick winners. In addition, you also get uh, NFL American football content. Um, where I just predict the winners of games against the spread over under and um, some fantasy football stuff. So if that interests you, you can uh, go there. That is not daily content, but you get a couple videos a week roughly. So that's that. Now, Istanbul Wildcats, they are the representatives from Turkey once more. Um, three out of the last, what? What do we have here? Th this is the third out of the last four events that... Uh, IW are representing Turkey, which has upset some Turkish fans. Um, they, it's, it's a mixed bag, actually, really, how I've seen TCL fans approach this team. I think they're they're not too happy that a five-man Turkish squad is going, not because of nationality or anything, but because of, I think they don't know, I don't think they think they're going to be successful. But then we have some people that believe that they will be, so it's really um, a thing. Um, now, given that they've been to a couple international events, this is the third time I'm going to be seeing them. So I have a little bit to say. Um, and similar to the Detonation Focus Me video that I did a few days ago, I had a lot to say as well because I felt like I knew how this team really w operated and what the problems were with it. Uh, if you haven't watched my videos before, I, I mean, I gained a hundred or so subscribers. I really appreciate that person that shared the uh, C9 video on the C9 subreddit. That was awesome. I can't share my videos on at least the league Reddit because of like some BS moderator rule, self-promotion rule. So whenever anybody shares my videos, it's pretty awesome. So I appreciate it. Um, so if you're new here, all my videos are one take. So if it gets a little chaotic like it is right now, it is what it is. Um, it's a little scuffed, but at the same time, I believe to be genuine, you limit the edits. You don't redo it. You don't really have a script per se. The script is the board, and I feel like it um, makes for a more conversational-like video, and it makes it more laid back where it's not like, you know, you know what I'm saying because you can see it. You're like, wow, this video is a little scuffed, a little rough, but at the same time, you know, this guy I can relate to when he's talking about this. So, uh, Coach, the qua the Cap, um, I mean, I don't know how to pronounce it, the Cap. Uh, he is 1-5. He was the coach at MSI um, 2022. That was his only international experience. The last three trips to Worlds, Turkey was out and playing 17th to 20th, 17th, 18th, and um, 19th to 20th. So, throughout... Um, summer my power rankings i had tcl nerfed the most out of all the minor regions uh, my power rankings throughout the split because i couldn't watch my inner regions play um i had to use msi as a a uh as a uh what is it a, a point of emphasis like how did teams do at msi relative to each other's regions when they faced each other internationally um so turkey has struggled for a while uh, some people are going to say, well, at X event, they went to five games or this or that. It's like, well, look at the, you know, vast majority of the last few years. Where has Turkey been? Um, it has struggled. Now, um, Istanbul is one of those teams that struggle. Star screen and top lane, uh, 5.1 KDA, 7.5 CS per minute, 
uh, KP. What do these numbers say compared to, say, Fudge yesterday or Broken Blade the day before? Um, good KDA, solid. He doesn't die. This team doesn't die much, actually. Very clean, um, not taking a lot of risks, and that will bode well for you in the playoffs. I think that's why they do well in the playoffs. And a team like Nasser Esports Turkey that did extremely well during the Turkish summer split could not get it done in playoffs. Now, 7.5 CS per minute, not where you want it to be. I believe 8 or higher is the bar, right? Now, 69 KP, also much higher. We look at yesterday. Fudge was at what? 52, 53%. Broken Blade at 50. So you're going to give up farm by getting into fights or making things happen, right? You're doing other things than farming. So, you know, that's kind of a wash. 20 damage share, 464 damage per minute. Solid numbers. Uh, we don't want a lot of damage in top lane for the most part. Uh, mixed at 15 minutes, this team is, everybody's mixed. And by that I mean, on Games of Legends, you look at 15 minutes and it has gold, XP, and uh, CS at 15 minutes relative to your, your lane, right? Relative to the player you're against in the game. And I think this is the first team that's mixed all the way across the board in that they're positive in some and negative in others or a wash. Um, either way, it's not all positive, it's not all negative. Um, two solo kills, four champions in eight games. Um, Starscreen has definitely left me with a sour taste in my mouth at the last two MSIs. Um, MSI 2021, they finished 10th, 11th, 2022, they would finish last. Two and 10, one and five in both runs. 0.89 KDA, 7.21 CS per minute, 50.3 KP. Starscreen... I, I act, I'm, I'm trying to be nice, um, has really, really struggled internationally. Um, a lot, a lot of struggles. Um, I mean, evidently, regionally he's okay, but internationally we have um, a, a situation here. 0.89 KDA is literally the worst KDA so far, and I say so far because we're going to get to worse KDA in this. And the way I do KDA, assist count is half. I believe assist count is half as much as a kill. Um, so 0 0.89 KDA, 7.21 CS per minute. We look at that and we say, okay, well, that's really low. That's I think Topoon might have been pretty low as well like that. But 50.3 KP means the guy is not fighting internationally, really. Only one every other kill he's involved. So he is doing something else instead of getting involved. He could be on the sidelines right there, like, oh, I'm on the other side of this wall, didn't position right. Or he could be on the other side of the rift and doesn't have TP or whatever, doesn't get to the fight in time. But if you're at 721 CS per minute, you should have a KP that's, like, crazy. It should be 75. It's, what, like, what are you doing? If you're not fighting, then you should be farming. If you're not farming, you should be fighting. Like, you're not a support, you're not a jungler, you're a laner. In uh, Ferret. 27 KDA, 4.5 CS per minute, 57.5 KP. Once again, um, we have another situation here. 4.5 CS per, this is, I mean, domestically, 4.5 CS per minute is very, that's like, Way might have had, I think Way had bad stats like this as well. And obviously Way, we're going to give the benefit of the doubt to, he's proven himself internationally to be a better player than what those stats were, but they were still concerning meta issues, things like that. With Ferret, 4.5 and 57.5, so he's farming less. I mean, yesterday we look at Blabber, 5.8 CS per minute. So on average at 10 minutes, actually on average at 15 minutes, Blabber is going to have a 18, 1.3, 13, 13. Yeah, roughly 18, 19, 20 CS lead on average at 15 minutes over a player like Farah. Just comparing two players in a vacuum. Um, which is a gap on average. Like imagine if he has a winning matchup and that's domestic versus domestic, a major region versus a minor region um, and 57.5 KP. So he's not getting involved in fights. He is not creating. He is not facilitating. He is farming. Not at, uh, uh, he is not farming at all. And he's not making things happen. And it, it's concerning 14.1 damage here, 323 damage per minute. That's a high damage share for a player that doesn't fight a lot. Like, why is he dealing 14% and not like 11% like you see other players? And they're like, oh, it's 3%. Well, we're going to go through this and you're going to be like, where did that 3% come from? And it's coming from bot lane and that's not a good look. 
Mix at 15 minutes, no solo kills, three champions in eight games. Uh, three Zin Zhao games. I don't think anybody else played uh, three Zin Zhao games in the playoffs um, in an eight-game window. MSI 2021. This whole team was together for the last two MSIs. So uh, last in MSI 2021 and 2022. Two in 10, 1.16 KDA, 5.36 CS per minute, 63.4 KP. Those numbers are even better than he had domestically, which is pretty crazy to think about right your numbers domestically i mean kda is obviously better but his farming numbers and his kp are better internationally and he's i mean internationally i thought he did okay at times the last couple of years um i felt like he's been a little hit or miss instead of missing all the time like other players on this team um so i mean it's a young squad like right here what is it who's the I think it is a Saren, Starscreen, and, and uh, Ferret, I think, are the three young players on this team. You know, 20 years old, 21 years old. Um, but this is their third time. Like, they need to take the next step. They didn't take it from year one to year two internationally. But you need to take it this time around. There needs to be, a, um, a, um, you know, an, an improvement, right? Um, so that's that. Saren in mid. I think is their best performer right now. These stats are very good. People have been telling me he's very good. And I thought he was very, his stats look very good going in MSI. But he didn't show up. Um, which was disappointing. So I have a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth from that. You know, saying to myself, okay, well, these numbers, 5.9 KDA, 8.9 CS per minute, 74.7 KP. We look at this team and Ferret is not the one making things happen. It is Saren. Saren is farming at an 8.9 CS per minute, you're not going to find a lot of players with that going into this event regionally. You're just not going to. And sure, major regions are tougher. I'm not going to deny that. But the fact is, 8.9 is very good. He is finding time to get fed and farm. 74.7 KP. Three out of every four kills, Saren is involved. Not many mid laners can say that. Not I. The only other team, honestly... Another another throwback to RNG is this is another team that's mid laner is doing most of the work. Um, and I think maybe Mad Lions, I know Niski did a lot of work for Mad Lions, but I can't recall what El Yoya's KP was relevant to uh, uh, Niski's to kind of figure that out. Um, obviously, I watched him play and Niski was all over the damn place. But um, El Yoya being a more carry jungler, I mean, he might not have been all over the place quite as much. But Saren, Saren is the one doing the work for this team. 32.3 damage share, 734 damage per minute. That 734 damage per minute is one of the highest in mid lane in this tournament coming in. I really do believe that that's definitely at least top five, and that's not with me looking at the numbers. So is he maybe the best minor region uh, mid laner going into this event, um, especially out of like the bottom few? It's, it's possible. It is entirely possible. And it was that case coming into MSI. But um, mixed at 15 minutes, six solo kills, four champions in eight games. Obviously very aggressive, six solo kills. He has the propensity to really get after it in lane. And maybe that's what he needs to do this time around. He needs to take the next step and get aggressive. Um, last two MSIs, last place, like I said. And we're going to get, we're going to relate, um, you know, how I felt at MSI to these stats here. 2 and 10, 175 KDA, 813 CS per minute, 66 KP. 8.13 CS per minute is not doing it for me. It is not doing it for me. Um, 8.5 is the line, and that's why 8.9 is really impressive because, okay, well, you're farming at a high level. You are getting ahead of your matchup. Um, now, 8.13 internationally, you're behind. That's going to happen when both of your experiences or at MSI you're against you're in a group with probably two very good teams what they were in the PSG RNG group was it RNG PSG um Red and IW and they lost to Red which was a big deal that was a concern because um I mean even Red Cannon fans don't didn't think Grabthar was that good in lane so if Saren was losing to Grabthar that's a problem right so 8.13 that was a disappointment the 1.75 KDA on this team, I mean, that's solid for this team, but
but we've went over all these teams so far. This is the 23rd team. Um, a lot of players have done better internationally, so I hope I hope Saren takes the next step. You know, I don't want these teams to play poorly. I'm bashing them, but I don't believe, you know, I'm going into this event being like, oh, well, Istanbul Wildcats, they're just, you know, don't even play the games. Like, no, I want to see success. I want the game to be better. I want the game to grow. Turkey is a place where the game can grow. So the, this team has to improve, especially with five Turkish players. I think that that is something to build off of. So I would hope that he takes the next step. In bot lane, you probably have the most notable Turkish player of all time in Holy Phoenix. 12.4, well, no, because people are going to say once in the LEC. I mean, domestically, player that stayed there throughout their whole entire career. Um, Holy Phoenix, 12.4 KDA, 10.2 CS per minute, 68.4 KP. He is very good. He doesn't die a lot. He farms really well, gets his items, and if he's online in the late game, watch out. But he has to get there. And we've seen the last couple tournaments that just don't let him get there. Take away a lot of his um, champions. I mean, we look at the bands. I said five bands a couple times. And so we said, no, that's not true. And I look back at it. There's a lot of three and four bands to 80 carries to Holy Phoenix. So what does that mean? Holy Phoenix has to get deep into his champion pool. Like that is what teams do. That is the reality of it. And the results of the last two tournaments for him are 2 and 10. Um, but domestically, 68.4 KP, solid for a bot laner. So he is he is very good. He really is. Um, 28 damage there, 644 damage per minute. That's what I meant by Ferret dealing 14% damage. Saren is the main damage dealer on this team, and it's not Holy Phoenix, and that is a problem. Bot lane focused meta, bot lane should be the ones dealing the damage. Um, and it's not like, oh, well, it's a damage per minute thing, not necessarily a damage share thing. You look and you say, well, 644 damage, damage per minute. You know, you would like Holy Phoenix to be up around 800 if he's the one, if he's the one farm, getting all the farm. I mean, is Starscreen and Ferret giving up farm to Holy Phoenix? I wouldn't be surprised. So they got to be dealing damage with that farm. Um, one solo kill, five champions in eight games. Sivir was the only champion he played multiple times. Worlds 2014, yes. That was his first international event. Um, last in that Worlds, last tier. Back then they didn't have play-ins. Uh, MSI 2021, uh, last uh, in MSI 2022, last. So... Uh, actually, I'm kind of curious if this might be the longest time window between Worlds appearances for a player. 2014 to 2022, we're looking at a nine-year gap. 2 and 16 at international events, 168 KDA, 860 OCS per minute, 75, 1 KP. Three out of every four kills, Holy Phoenix is involved. That's because the team plays around him internationally. And, and it makes sense, right? You look at his domestic numbers, he's cracked. Um, but... When he gets to international events, there's some struggles. The farming numbers, I mean, they're rough, but at the same time, we're looking at a situation where a guy played in 2014. It was a totally different game back then than it is now. Um, so, hopefully, he can uh, get an opportunity to shine this time around. Uh, support, we have Farfetch, 6.3 KDA, 73.3 KP. One cleared ward every four minutes, one dropped ward every three minutes, four champions in eight games. MSI 2021, last tier, 2022, last place. 2 and 10, 0.68 KDA, which is the worst. 60.1 KP, which is low. So he's dying a lot, dying early on in fights, getting picked off, not getting into not getting into the skirmish. It's a 5v5, he dies right away. He doesn't get an assist. He doesn't do get anything. And, um, I mean, these numbers are rough. A lot of people, um, whenever I talked about this team, they said, oh, Farfetch is the problem, Farfetch is the problem. It's Farfetch and it's Starscreen. Um, these, and the thing is, like, in this meta specifically, um, I mean, I don't know how Farfetch is really on Enchanters across the board. Obviously, they're here, so he's decent enough domestically. But um, Starscreen should benefit from this meta being a little favorable. Like, oh, you can play Orn, you can play Gragas, Sejuani, Nar. And kind of just like facilitate and not really carry, right? Um, and Firefetch, go on a Yumi. If they're going to, I mean, I could honestly, if I'm playing this team, I'm banning Ari, Yumi, and then 
something of Holy Phoenix in the first round. And then, I mean, I know for a fact that I'm probably going to be in a good spot. Like, Holy Phoenix will get a matchup that he likes. But at the same time, he won't have the Yumi alongside him. And if Farfetch has to actually play the game instead of playing the cat, maybe it's a wash, right? So, um, that's it for my Istanbul Wildcats preview. Thank you for watching. Uh, become a YouTube member. Join the Discord. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe to the channel. Button's right there. Like the video if you like it. Share it if you enjoy it that much. Um, I really appreciate everyone subscribing and enjoying my content. And I hope you come back for more.